a beautiful Durban day. It's hot. It's day two of the third and final castle test between South Africa and the West Indies. One all it is, but you've got to say it's 10 nil to South Africa after yesterday because they made all the running. And the West Indies have to work really, really hard if they're going to get back into this game today. Simon Taufel is out there, the Australian standing in his 49th test match and his partner at the other end is Alim Da from Pakistan in his 44th test were called upon yesterday and did their work beautifully Dwayne Bravo is the young West Indian skipper standing in for Chris Gale who injured his thumb fractured his thumb in Cape Town where they lost to Graham Smith South Africa today for Graham Smith, it's just about batting and batting and batting. He's on 122 not out, so no worries about the milestone. He can comfortably go about his work. They fed his strengths, the West Indies, and he duly accepted. Hashim Amla is in partnership with him. He's on 55 not out and will look to continue where he left off. The partnership worth 160 of 206 balls so going along at a good pace as well the forecast for the day minimum of 18 degrees maximum of 30 degrees as a discomfort index of 37 degrees celsius well i wish i could really explain what that means i'm not too sure to be honest the forecast says fine to partly cloudy there's also a moderate north northeasterly but fresh breeze. Sunset in 1901. Oh, I don't expect we'll play till then. So a good day ahead in prospect if you're South African and hard work ahead if you're West Indian. I've got a West Indian next to me. Jeffrey Dujon. Jeff, what do you expect? Well, first of all, morning, everyone. Well, the West Indies have dug a hole for themselves. They bowled poorly and now they're 74 behind South Africa nine wickets in hand a whole day or more to bat if they so wish and I guess they'll do that if the West Indies don't get some wickets yes yeah, certainly they won the toss South Africa yesterday decided that they would bowl first with their five seamers that were picked for this test match no spinners in their side justified that decision by bowling the West Indies out for 139 now 213 for one Gibbs the man to go 27 he played it to all parts I spoke about um, the West Indies bowling and Graham Smith's strength today surely they got to leave off there Why? yes I think they've got to let him play in that area a lot more today The first pull shot of the morning. Beautifully executed by Graham Smith. South Africa, 219 for one. Sublime. It's a beautiful shot that. Nicely into position and perfectly splits the fielders. this was right up in the slot out of the middle of the bat as his innings has gone on Hashim Amla has looked better and better it's gone for four not quite where he intended but the desired result it was wide enough for him to cut it's just a bottom edge this wouldn't be the bowler's fault it could easily have taken a thin a thin edge I think it caught the bottom of the bat it's another shot he was in control of but his willingness to play out there should give the West Indies some heart well it will put you away all day there he did that yesterday four more to Graham Smith Four more to South Africa, 238 for one. Mm, 
Well, a little too full and a little too close to that off stump. And Graham Smith just using the angle and whips that one away. South African leader shot up to 99. What a shot. It just sat up to be hit and Hashim Amla smashed that back with a point for four. Another solid square cut from Hashim Amla. And not a particularly special ball from Daryl Powell. It was short, gave him enough room outside that off stump. And you don't see square cuts played much better than that one. He's waiting for it to be short as well. Darren Sammy is not quick at all. He's a medium pacer and needs to hit a good length. If he misses, he's going to fetch. That's the first of them. Well, he knows how flat this wicket is, Graham Smith. Just sat back and waited on this one. And if you're bowling at Sammy's pace, you can't afford to be that short. Asking uh, what my take on, or my, what my take was on the fact that these two batsmen took the light when they were offered it, albeit that as soon as they walked off, the sun came out again. But that that isn't the issue. The issue is it was a little bit murky. They were offered it. Why did they go off when they had West Indies on their knees? They were scoring at four and a half runs and over. They didn't seem to be any trouble. What your what what is your opinion of that? Did they do the right thing or not? I thought it was pathetic. I was walking home straight after the end, and there were people saying hello to me, and they were irate. I mean, if you look around the ground, there's hardly anybody here. There's no wonder that kills the game. They say we come and pay good money. They're scoring, they're knocking the bowling around, and they go off. I mean, it's ludicrous. I mean, if we'd have gone off at Yorkshire in the days of Brian Close, he'd have thumped us if we'd have come up the stairs. He'd been waiting for us. Out, 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 out. Leading edge. He was turning that to leg, his favourite area. Ah, from nowhere. It's a mistake. Ball didn't do very much, as I said. You can only really get out on this flat pitch if you do something silly. And if we see again, I think I'm going to close the face. Really interesting fielding position, too. Yeah, dead right. He's trying to hit that through mid-wicket. It's gone off that fat edge of these bats. It's flown to uh, silly mid-off, but silly mid-off was there for a reason. Might not have been the leading edge, but he caught him out for 69. South Africa 252 for two. Well, the lead is 113, and the man coming to the crease, Jack Cullis, had an extraordinary year in Test cricket, over a thousand runs in the calendar year. South Africa's leading batsman's got a wonderful record against the West Indies, apart from his Test career record of 9,340 runs at an average of 58. 29 centuries there with uh, Bradman and Hayden. They both got 29. His test career against the West Indies, he averages 74 with about 700s and 1050s. Here's the wicket again, trying to knock it through mid wicket, leading edge, caught silly mid off. Great camera work there. Now this is where, as an international side, when you get a new batsman in after taking a wicket and you're thrilled about that, you get a new batsman, you should be able to exercise some control. Don't care how good he is. When uh, he starts on naught, he'll be the best player in the world. If you can't exercise any control when he's on naught, not out, then you have a serious problem. I don't necessarily mean that you bowl him out cheaply or get him out easily. The ball hasn't done anything. 
but I don't care who you are when you're on naught well, you're looking to get off the mark you're looking to play yourself in a little bit unless you bowl very bad balls if you get a bad ball you put it away as he will he's got a good record but make him struggle a bit there you are it shouldn't be difficult to make him struggle about any batsman on naught 252 for two now if you're thinking sensibly what you've got to try and do is stop smith from getting much of the bowling you've got to deny him the bowling try and get him off strike with a single and bowl as much as you can at the new batsman now just two things it frustrates smith who's got plenty of runs 147 are out he's looking to take the bowling apart and you have a better chance of getting the new batsman out or oh, that's the theory of it now whether they're good enough to do it there's a little bit of noise out there now all of a sudden the uh, west indies are looking a little perky just now there were some shoulders rounded shoulders now they're straight backs gone what did we say when one goes invariably another does and it's exactly what's happened it's amazing how history repeats itself just three short of 150 south african captain is back in the hut it's a nice ball this by taylor it just went across him a little bit and as always He's been cut off in mid-sentence our Jeffrey's microphone's four and a half. Smith's out for 147 and it's 252 for three. He's back. Yes, it was good innings. Nice innings. I thought that was a good ball from Taylor. It just went across him. And as always, Smith is trying to play to the log leg side. He, he really prefers it so much. When we see the replay again, he's playing that through mid-on. Um, occasionally he plays it to mid-off, but a lot of the time he's looking to get it to the onside. Uh, of Taylor, I'm a fan of Taylor, of the three West Indian quick bowlers, I think he's the best. I think he has a good run-up. And I'm pleased for him he got a wicket, because I think he's a good trier. I think he's bowled really well this series. Nashville Prince. So 252 for three now, the lead 113. So that brings Ashwell Prince to the crease at number five. South African left hand average is uh, around about 40 in Test cricket, which is very acceptable. 41, in fact, nearly 42 over 2,000 runs, 600s, 750, so a pretty good conversion rate there. Well, when you consider Prince's dismissals in this series so far, it's critical that another slip goes in there. Well, he should have a bat and pad short leg. That one bounced off a length and hit him on the glove. What happens if it had gone up? Nobody to catch it. Certainly a second slip in. This is poor. I know it's Bravo's first test match, but this is poor. I mean, if a nick goes to second slip now, he'll feel like hanging himself. day to come and watch cricket you can sunbathe and picnic there's good grass areas all around this ground <laughs> maiden over 253 for three it's a good stroke from Cullis his first boundary
I was just thinking, Robin, you asked me earlier about South Africa coming off for light. If they'd have stayed on last night, Mr. Smith might have got a few more runs. He might have got out. Yeah, but he might have got more runs. He was going well. He didn't look as if he had to get out. And then this morning he had to start again, and he did get out. Might teach him to stay on next time. Too short. Cannot err in length, particularly on the shorter side because the field is set to the offside. It's easy pickings here on this pitch, and particularly if your pace is not quite up there. Poor delivery, well struck by uh, Jacques Callas. Now, Sammy, he battles to get it above 120, so. It's very important from his point of view that uh, he bowls a fuller length. Yeah, it's different if he's actually trying to bowl a bouncer, but he's just missed his length there. He's not trying to bowl it short, and he's probably also trying to ensure that he hits the pitch a bit and gets that bounce that he can from, from his height. More orthodox gully in position now for Taylor after the previous over. We nearly dismissed... Ashwell Prince in that area, oh, and just to the right of him, just talking about that gully, and he so nearly came into play. He did exactly what the bowler wanted there. It's shortish, it's not a very short delivery, so he's not playing a square cut, he's looking to drive off the back foot, gets an outside edge, and it's not too far away. From the man in gully, it's Dwayne Bravo there. Oh, just love to watch him drive. And if it's in the slot, he'll put, put it away and he'll look good doing it too. Very little margin of error here for Sammy. At his pace, his length's got to be spot on. Jack Cullis is very strong. Square of the wicket on the offside. He played this nice and late. Just worked it through the gap. It's through the gully region again, this time along the ground. And for two, eight, four, for three. Four. A good shot from Kallis. The lead goes up to 150. Short and wide. Callis saw that early. As we said, you can't bowl short on this pitch. The ball just sits up. Callis goes up and over the infield. Medium pace that can only do so much, and you know, they can use the pace of the ball. He's done okay, Sammy, he's got a wicket, but he's bowled quite a lot. And eventually, the batsmen are going to pick him off. He just strays towards leg and middle or so, and he's clever enough with his hands to just angle the bat and just ride the ball. See? He just bowled that short of a length and he's... He never looked like being in trouble, did he, Callis? You mentioned the word textbook, and that's what it is. I mean, short of a length, band it in. Not too short, but short. There it is, sits up. Thank you. That's time to get on top of it, Jack Callis, and hit it down. 300 has come up for South Africa. And these days, in the modern game, nearly everybody has a dart at pulling because of the face mask. You know, going back many years before it, before 78-9, you had to be very switched on and choosy about what you pulled the hook, because otherwise you might have been in the hospital. So you better get it right. Today, you, you got a smack on the helmet. It's no problem, is it? Just gives you a bit of a surprise. Yeah, he's gone again for it. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. Help yourself. See, these today, if they get a top edge into the face, it doesn't hurt them. If they miss it and it hits the helmet, it doesn't hurt them. You get tail enders pulling, not just galleys. It's interesting here to see how he gets to roll the wrist on top of that and hit it down. It shows how much time he has. It's just setting up for him. Gets in beautiful position, Jack Gallis. The 50 partnership is up. Between these two. One sixty-eight the lead. That's flick fine. Won't be cut off. That's four more to Jack Callis. Well, it's a nice shot, no doubt about. Problem is the discipline, you see. Four decent balls outside off stump, then it's too straight, and it's little leg land. So it's discipline, yeah, and call it ability or what, but it, it's just that you don't quite have it to be able to bowl the discipline line for six balls. Partly ability, it's partly a mental thing. All I can say to you, Jeffrey, when he discovered him in the net, it doesn't say much for the other bowlers that we're going to play. Well, I guess it was all about raw pace. That one could make it as well. And that's his 50. Jack Callis. It's 47-50. He's 11th against the West Indies. It's 3.23 for three. Well, he's in his 114th test match. Jack Callis. It's a good stroke. It's a very good stroke from Prince. Nice and still. Nothing complicated. Excellent. Let's pay some attention to this for a moment. Edwards getting it right up there, hoping for a little bit of reverse swing. But good timing by Ashwell Prince. It's also the skill level, being able to just repeat the length and the line and I think that that was what was lacking they'd bowl a couple of reasonable deliveries but just couldn't maintain any form of consistency that will be shot there and Jacques Cullis getting outside the line of off stump he's walking across his stumps trying to work it on the leg side just that extra pace was enough Played it beautifully. Wonderful timing. It's where he was looking the whole over. Got it there off the last ball. 3.34 for three. Has he hit that hard enough for four? He certainly has. There is a sweep out there, but it's a poor delivery, short and wide. And as we've said, on this pitch, you just can't ball short colors had plenty of time hit that over point oopsie that's very unathletic fielding take anything away from the stroke this delivery is over pitched and well hit by Ashwell Prince but it really should have been stopped
354 for three then two overs away from the new ball and uh, to bowl with a new ball in a moment or two Jeffrey boycott Palmer Bangwell thank you Jackers Peter Edwards looking to go around the wicket to Ashwell Prince. He's got one slip in place and a gully. That's what he wants to happen. He wants Ashwell Prince to play away from the body outside that off stump in hopes that he can straighten one. Nicely played that. And he's got it for four as well. Well, for Edwards, it's in his mental makeup, isn't it? As a fast bowler, to keep trying to knock it in short. And every time he does, it sits up nicely. Chest high, that. Just lovely. You don't have to hook. You just help it around with a pull shot. Look, it's just above waist height. Lovely height, isn't it? And he gets crashed through cover. Beautiful shot that from Callis. Well, it's exactly what I was mentioning. Look at the length. It's right up there. He can get stuck into it, can Jack Callis. Shot. Decided to deliberately go over the top, Jacques Callis. Bring up four more. Well, it is a good pitch. There's no doubt at all. There's no big spin from anybody in the West Indies side. So you treat it as a straightish delivery. There's not been a lot to suggest that you'd want to keep the old ball. So that's why I'm a bit baffled that. Powell came into the attack and gone. He's got the breakthrough, Marlon Samuels. Cullis gone for 74. Well bowled West Indies, but it was an extravagant shot. Look at this. He's trying to go inside out. And just I think gets a little bigger on him than he expects. He's mad with himself because he knows that's a gift of a wicket. He's given away a hundred. Played very well, scored quickly, and it's a wicket. 374 for four. A.B. de Villiers walks out to the crease. Jacques Callis just departed for 74. That's a look at de Villiers' career. On average, about 35 and a half, 313 fifties. The new ball is being taken. It's not often you see this. The spinner's bowling. He's got two more balls to go. And he decides he'll take the new ball with the new batsman coming to the crease. Well, why not? He's not spinning it. He's drifting <laughs> the ball away, so he might as well. He can drift it a bit more. Get a slip catch. He's got two slips in as well. Yeah, there you are. He's a drift bowler. He's not a spinner. He's just, I told you, he's a slow bowler before lunch. Spinner, they'd laugh in the West Indies. But he's got a wicket. Absolutely got a wicket. A big wicket, too. And a big one. A big fish. Uh, you get too clever, you get yourself out. Go oh. on, oh, give him a short leg for a batten pad. Crowd him in. Yeah, get in there. My goodness, bravo, start thinking. Yep, you see, that wasn't really there to hit. It's a nice shot. But didn't overhit that. Just pushed it through the covers, Ashwell Prince, and he brings up an eighth test 50. Applause from the crowd and also from his teammates. Nicely played by A.B. De Villiers, that'll be four. It's 
very good stroke. Good balance. Abe de Villiers waited for that delivery. He's going in towards Midland leg. Played that beautifully. A beautiful timer of the ball, Abe de Villiers. Short and wide, and the same result. Boundary to Abe de Villiers. End of the 89th over. 407 for four. Hasn't middled that. But he's got it far enough. Four more. Well, he was just a little hurried on that. That's why he spooned it a bit in the air. But he got plenty of bat on this. Yeah. It goes way over the man. There's no real chance of the man turning and catching it. He's quite a long way behind this ball. Anyway, he's not even in the picture. Sometimes it just goes up off the splice, but he didn't. He took the bat. He... Pulled away and hard enough for four. Standard into the ground just a little bit, but it's a quick outfield here. Stroke slightly on the up. Nevertheless, ex execution was very good. Nicely played. Short, wide, cut away. It's parchment in the deep. He tried to use his foot. Nearly got there. Couldn't stop it for. Square cut. Maybe de Villiers is very strong in that area. Parchment nearly got there with a the foot, but ball cannon into the fence anyway. Thinking ahead as as we have been talking about declaration. Oh, it's down! Thinking about the West Indies batting. Realistically, how long? they can it's a big challenge huge challenge to try and save the game you we spoke of rain as well that's, him, Rob. that's off the edge he'll get a couple maybe four sammy is after it will he get there no it's a tired effort that even more reason to look to bowl tonight because they are a dispirited outfit at the moment. So the last thing West Indies would want to do is fend off an hour of hostile bowling this evening. Yeah, they've got a long way to go to either save this match or get a massive total to try and get in a position to set South Africa something. It's uh, mentally going to be very tough for them to respond. And also technically we've seen that they've got limitations when the ball bounces. Boundary ball up 450. Nicely played. Improvisation by Ashwell Prince. It's packed on the offside, so he goes on the onside. Nice way to finish the over. 458 for four. He's gone for it. Moved across to the offside and he was always looking to go on the onside and he gets it over mid on maybe the billiards can play shots and that's what he's looking to do that was some shot as well maybe the billiards just uh, shuffling across almost a premeditated shot and just picking that up hitting it beautifully over mid on needs one for his 50. gone through and turns to go for the second maybe de Villiers brings up a 14th test 50 his fourth against the West Indies wonderfully played in partnership with Ashwell Prince and he'll be looking to go on 
third half century in the series for Obi de Villiers. Batted very well, Ashwell Prince. There it is, with the bound. That was real hard work for the last 25 minutes, but it was worth waiting for. Ashwell Prince's seventh century is second against the West Indies, along with uh, seven other 50s. Second important innings of this tour. Well, he's proved to be a very important man in the middle of the South African order. Ashwell Prince. He's batted solidly. He's taking his time, he's put away the bad balls. And finally achieves what he missed out on. The lead 369. Never race away, it'll be four more. Just, but four nevertheless. Well, he's been out there long enough to see these and know exactly what to do with them. Smith isn't going to declare. He really would rather get it out of the way than have to wait till tomorrow, and he's got plenty of time to do that. Well, there's four of them. that that's maximum Samuel's bowling around the wicket to Abi de Villiers didn't mess around with this one well he just tosses it up round about leg stumper outside from around the wicket he's the sort of lad that's going to have a free swing at it Another boundary, good shot. Lead now, 3.94. Shot. Tried a slower ball there, but he got it quite wide, and, and that's where De Villiers likes it. You give him width, he plays that front foot drive, and also almost a front foot slash he has. hit that yeah short again he's he's interested in the cut shot and the pull shot and anything wide of off stump that's his area like graham smith abi de villiers has done well against the west indies I don't think he's deliberately bowling short. I think it's just tiredness now. You can tell when he's putting it into ball short. The one that was wide outside off stump, that was deliberate. And just trying to get it up there and sometimes they're dropping it down short. Yeah, that's what he wants. Well played. Brings De Villiers on strike, gives him an opportunity now. So he doesn't have to hang around too long. They only had 107 balls as De Villiers, for his 98 not out. I wouldn't be surprised if they declared, no. I think if he gets out or gets his 100, then get themselves 10 overs if the light holds.
looking for his fourth century in Test cricket. There it is, short delivery again, outside off stump. Abe de Villiers loves him in that spot. Good innings. It's only taken him 108 balls. It's been a convincing innings. He's cemented this number six position. Well, you've almost got to bowl fairly full and fairly straight at him. He's very keen to get those back foot shots in, cut or pull, and width on the front foot. Yeah, that's where you've got to bowl, very straight. I'll be watching next year in England, see if England have done their homework on him. Early on, it's quite a good call just to get it to nip back at him. I'm sure England bowlers will approach it a whole lot differently. They got a different style of bowling, particularly in England. That delivery is short and wide, and he loves them there. <coughs> Happiness in the dressing room. It's been the most convincing batting performance for a while. I wonder if that was a catch. He was trying to work it to the onside. It spooned back. Very difficult for a bowler following through. I'm sure many commenters have made that point. But it sort of spooned there, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, just fell short, I think. And it would have been difficult to catch anyway. He did well to get down to it. There it is, as we thought, Graeme Smith calling them in, and it's a good decision. South Africa lead by 4-1-7. They should have about 11 overs to bowl to the West Indies tonight. A very good effort by A.B. de Villiers and by Ashwell Prince. Good effort collectively by the South African top order. Well, it's, it's been all South Africa today to a very... Pleased young man. I thought Prince played exceptionally well until he got to the 90s. He looked very composed and in control. And de Villiers has been a contrast. He's been attacking. He's butchered the bowling when it's been short. And it just left South Africa in a very strong position. From the West Indies' point of view, I'll, look, they're giving it everything. I think they look to have a nice spirit to their players. Look to be a nice set of lads who are. Quite a few of them there applauding the two centurions and a couple shaking the hand. Unfortunately, just a few of their players are a bit lacking in quality, I feel. feel. South Africa were firm favourites going into the series. The, the loss to the first test match was a major surprise, but they bounced back. They played well in, the, in this decider and they can close it out over the next couple of days. partnerships all the way down the line which is good Graham Smith played well for his century Asha Mamla played well so did Jack Cullis and then of course Ashwell Prince and Abi de Villiers Taylor was the best of the West Indies bowlers the other struggled Dwayne Bravo couldn't bowl which meant uh, a major problem from a West Indian point of view but they had a tough time. They didn't bowl well last night when conditions were more favourable and they paid the price today when the pitch got very flat. South Africa take the field in a quest to get 10 wickets and wrap up the series against the West Indies by two tests to one. They might have uh, a little bit more difficulty, or they should have a little bit more difficulty getting those 10 wickets in this innings than they did in the first as they were assisted by 
a fairly lively pitch on day one so the tasks are all important in this particular test chief destroyer Dale Stain 20 wickets against the New Zealanders earlier in the summer in two tests and now 15 in this series so far Darren Ganga West Indian opening batsman with me is former West Indian wicketkeeper batsman Geoffrey Dujon and I've no doubt Jeff that you and all other West Indians are looking for some serious application now that it's clear it's a pretty good batting pitch yes definitely Jack as um, the West Indies to this point can take very little if anything out of this game it's an uphill task what they have to set themselves now is the task of batting and making a big score occupying the crease for long periods it's a good batting wicket because I think going into the rest of this tour they have to carry some kind of a positive with them and a good batting performance a solid batting performance if it is even that they manage to overhaul this 417 I think will go some way in reinstilling a little bit of confidence in the batters the bowlers haven't really distinguished themselves in this game but as a team they need to take something bright from this game a beautiful channel from stain right up front looks as if uh, umpire simon Taufel after just one ball is going to switch from square leg to square on the offside the sun would be straight in his eyes if he were to remain on the leg side. It's a little bit of a feel. Nervous. Paul Harris on the field at mid-off. Well, as he does, Dale Stain, perfect seam position. That'll go for four. <coughs> He's getting the ball to swing Dale Stain. Just push that one a bit too much to leg. Just worked away for four. Pulled away with power. Young Parchment showing and Teeny that he might be making his debut, but he won't be intimidated. Well, the middle of this pitch hasn't gotten any quicker. Time enough. And he hits it in front of square. Outside the line of off stump. Little smile from umpire Simon Tarfel. South Africa desperate to get one tonight before going in. And Deeney has gone past the outside edge a few times. That's a long way outside the off stump. Not out. Not out, not out. Dickie Burr won't give that out. He said, what are you doing? Keep appealing for that. Are you that desperate? I say, yes. <laughs> Only me, if he don't even be appealing. It. Playing the shot, he's outside of stump, everybody can see it. Not fielded. That was the ball to bowl as well, the one that straightens up after a couple into the pads.
So if he doesn't push at the ball, just hold it, hold it, don't push, then the ball has a greater chance of going down rather than carrying to slip. He's obviously a young man, he's under pressure, his first test match. Try and survive. Don't be doing anything clever or silly. Wait till he balls you a really bad ball, then you can clip it away. Bat first. Bat first. Two sounds. I'm like you. I think he maybe nicked it. We'll see. Let's see. Well, maybe not. If he didn't, but it's difficult. You know, you can't see a sign. Did he get a little inside edge or what? If he didn't, then it was pretty straight. He got his feet a little tangled up. They all went up. That don't mean a thing. He has a good shape on it, makes it go away. That's always the most difficult for batsmen. Not the only ball, but it's the more difficult because you can't use your pad as a second line of defence when it comes in. You can play slightly outside the line and if you miss it, it hits your pad if you're playing close together. Um, I think uh, the youngster Morkel will be quite a good bowler when he gets fit and uh, gets bowling. I, I sense there's a, quite a bit to come there. We've got the old head Pollock when you get pitches that move a bit and then Stain always a hit the deck, aggressive sort of individual. So they've got some different bowlers. Ah, oh, good shot, lad. Bad ball may be, but well played and well done, West Indies. Well done, 23 for none, a difficult session for them. One lad in his first test match, Parchment, Ganga, had a lot more experience, but even so, except for the one LBW appeal, which we thought might have nicked it, but we're not sure. If he didn't, he looked out, he got his feet in a tangle, but that, that's history, it's gone. That's the look of the draw, you get given out sometime, not. Well, that, well, they've had a difficult day, West Indies, so they should take a bit of heart from that. They've all day tomorrow to bat, show some pride, think about it, see if they can bat all day tomorrow and into Sunday. I don't think they're going to save the match unless it rains. So get some pride out of it, individually and team-wise. And from South Africa, well, they just had a fantastic day. Everybody's filled, nearly everybody's filled the boats with runs. Yeah, what more could they ask, South Africa? Well, the West Indies will take heart from that from the start of them by Ganga and Parchment, as you say. That's a look at the scorecard. 23 for none. The West Indies went out there and faced 11 overs. Not too much trouble, it must be said. Good bowling from South Africa. They attacked. There were quite a few LBW appeals. Just one over for Pollock. But Ndini and Stain had a good go these West Indians and couldn't get any success today so the state of the match after two days West Indies 139 Pollock 4 for 35 chief destroyer there in South Africa filled their boots 556 five, for 4 and are still 394 ahead